welcome you and all to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast, where we talk about Latino everything. Thank you very much. You already know the motto. Why? Because you are subscribed. If you are not subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. Support the community. Get these stories out there. These beautiful stories of amazing Latinos with a great representation of our community out to the world today. Make sure you subscribe. Today, we have an amazing individual. I met him at one of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce events. He wasn't even a member at that time. Forward, going forward, now today he is a member, but he's been doing his thing for some time. He is a founder and market, marketing strategist for Hispanos Marketing. He grew up in Pleasant Grove, and can you believe it or not, he lived out of his car for almost a year. That's yeah. right. And now he own, owns his own company. So far, his company, Hispanos Marketing, has helped over a thousand Latino owned businesses with design, strategy, consulting, and online resources. El Señor, or the gentleman, young gentleman, Cristian Rocha, a.k.a. Chris Rocha in La Casa. Hola. Hi, how's it going? Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I don't know which, which one to look at. but I'll, You can look at me, uh, but if yeah, you want yeah. to, that camera will be yours. Awesome, favorite. awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's we met at the at the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. Um, and we chatted up a bit, and we were like, hey, you know, we vibed right away. And uh, But yeah, thank you for the invite, man. It's, it's really an honor to be here, man. He was actually inviting himself quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, I time. know. I no, I appreciate yeah. that so much. The eagerness, the hunger yeah. of you wanting to be out there, having your message across because you're yeah. so passionate about your company. It, like, it got me excited to have you here because yeah. you were really into it. And, and I appreciate it. No, yeah. Not at all. Because you get too occupied sometimes. You're doing, doing things and that. And then, you know, sometimes you might miss an opportunity. If you yeah. see it, you want to be it. You got to take the initiative to make yeah. it happen, right? So I appreciate it so much. Oh, yeah. Not, nothing you. like that. I really do appreciate it. No, no, for it. sure. And I think what I, what I saw and what interested me the most about what you do and what you're doing is just that the consistency with, with all aspects of what you're doing, right? The consistency and the posting. I see you always come up on my social media on the reels <laughs> and just the quality of what you got going on here. It's, it's, those are the type of people that I think I like surrounding myself with and working with. And, and when I saw your stuff and I met you, I was like, it's the go-to guy. And yeah, I invited myself a couple of times. I was like, can we please make a podcast? We'll go make it happen. I told yeah, you yeah. We appreciate it. Done. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and continue with a segment that I like to call Preguntas al Chile. Now is the time to subscribe. I don't know what you're waiting for. You're letting us down when you don't do it. I'm not going to make you feel bad. I don't try to make you feel bad, but you already know it helps us. It's for free. Go ahead. Yeah. Listo? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Ready. Estás listo. Ready. Tacos o tortas. So I, I saw a couple of the podcasts. I went back and I, I did some research and I, and I noticed that everybody says tacos. Yeah. And they don't show love to the tortas. Yeah. I'm going to show some love today and say tortas. Tortas, it is. What kind of torta? Oh, um, Anything that has fajita, aguacate, queso, um, crema, you can't go wrong with crema and jalapeno. That's just me. That's just yeah, the yeah. right combo for you? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Corn tortilla, flour tortilla. We'll take some, some harina. I like corn, yeah. but some harina. I was just a dieta, so sometimes, you know, I got to go. Harina. All right. Gorditas or pupusas? Latino and me, Mexican. Gorditas. We're going to do some gorditas. Gorditas. Have you ever had pupusas? Have you had? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's this. Yeah, yeah. I love pupusas. Um, I love baleadas. I don't know. Baleadas are not Salvadorian, right? Mm, they might be. It does. It's not clicking on me right now. If but I, I baleadas remember. and pupusas are foods that are not traditionally Mexican that I love. Yeah. Mm, Especially because yeah. it has sour cream and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. I have to look it up. Baleadas. I know I heard it before. I just can't, it doesn't. It's not ringing yeah. into it's, my. It's kind of it like a tortilla de harina con uh -huh. crema, queso, y frijolito. It's yeah. like really, really simple, but it's so spot every time. Yeah. Okay. Mexican coca or jarritos? Let's do some uh, jarritos. Jarritos. Yeah, yeah. Sabor. What flavor? Naranja. 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 Yeah. Agua de horchata, Jamaica, or tamarindo? I'd go with the horchata. horchata. For sure, for sure, yeah. yeah. What is the best horchata you had so far? Where, from where... Mm, what place they, they so strike? I don't know a lot of uh, places out. So I moved a little bit away from Pleasant Grove. Originally, I'm from Pleasant Grove, as you mentioned. Yeah. My that's my hood, my barrio. Yeah. So there's a lot of small little spots that you know are like kind of like in the hood, you know. So usually anything in Pleasant Grove is go to place for tacos. I yeah. for sure. Yeah, nice. Make sure you talk about Pleasant. Yeah, Grove. Pleasant Grove. We do have some. Yeah, during the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you nervous sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, salsa verde, salsa roja. Do you even like spice? Yeah, I love spicy food. I love spicy food. I grew up with my dad cooking the the most amazing hot sauce, the habanero, nice. habanero sauce. So habanero. anything spicy, man, go to. Yeah. So it's like serrano, uh, uh, jalapeno, and then habanero. We're going to the top, straight top. Yeah, habanero. Man, menudo or pozole? 
Do some pozolito. Pozolito is always good. Yeah. You know, sometimes whenever you're not feeling too hungry, you not, you know. Now, pozole, they, you know, got, they got the red one, they have the green one, or sometimes yeah. the white one. Which one do you prefer? Green one? We could do green. Yeah. We, I mean, we do a little bit of everything. When it comes to Mexican food, anything, I'll eat it all. I, I like but, pozole with some tostadas or some mm. tautas acompañadas. ¿Y, y de tomar? Y una, un jarrito de Ooh. tamarindo. No he comido, eh. Ahorita nos vamos a aventar uno. <laughs> Unos tacos. Okay, uh, Valentina Tapatio or Cholula hot sauce? So those snack? are not spicy to me. At all. Yeah, at all. At all. So, but if I were to choose Valentina's as a go-to, you know, you put that on, on unos nachos, chips. Uh, but I, I'd go straight habanero sauce, man. So, yeah. do you get yucateco? You like that one? Yeah. That's your, yeah, that's yeah. Your, your to go to. The one like that, that like one. Like, that's a llorar, bro. That you're sweating and burning calories. That's my hot It tastes good still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Good pain, good pain. Cumbia or salsa dancing? I'll be honest, I'm not a dancer. I can't dance. At all? I have two left feet. Really? Yeah. yeah. When did yeah. you discover that? When I, I tried to, uh, well, I tried to practice on my own. You know, uh -huh. you know, have you ever, like, you know, try to impress someone on a date and you kind of practice and rehearse before? Yeah. That was me. I was like, you know, what, what if, for, for whatever reason, she wants to dance? And then I put some music on. I was like, I, I'm bad at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at this. So I was like, let's just not do that on the first day. Let's just... You know, go get some coffee or something. But yeah, but I, but I like cumbia. Cumbia, um, my family's from Monterrey. I have mm, from uh, okay. family Monterrey, Nuevo León y Tampico, Tamaulipas. Nice. So Monterrey se escucha mucho la cumbia. Yeah. Mucha cumbia. Mucha cumbia de todas, de todo tipo. De yeah, yeah. Okay. A conspiracy theory that you heard one time. When you heard, you're like, that has to be true. So the one thing about me, man, I, I could go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy <laughs> theories, man. I, I live for conspiracy theories. I... I I watched this uh, YouTube channel called The Y Files, mm -hmm. um, and they just go down and they kind of talk about everything from the moon landing was fake to reptilians, you know, living in the center of the earth from the moon being hollow. But I think the one that I, I sometimes think about and doesn't let me sleep is the moon landing was fake. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I was telling somebody there's got a, uh, there's a new movie coming out about yeah. the moon landing and everything. Yeah. The hollow moon thing. That's a good one too. I've seen a bunch of yeah. videos. And there's actually there's actually some some docs out there that say how the the government actually they purposely launched the satellite to crash yeah. into the moon. Yeah. And they were just kind of surprised that they heard like a really really long ringing. It rang which, for a long time. Yeah. Like oh, you know about solo. this. So yeah, you I go saw, all in too, huh? I saw the same one. What about you? What's your conspiracy theory? The one that you're just like, ah, oh, this has to be true. You know what? The I just recently went to the sphere. I was sharing this with the last gentleman here, the sphere in Vegas. Yeah. And I, you always hear about the matrix and this is all maybe uh, this is not real, whatever, you know, it's mm -hmm. a bunch of glitches, whatever. When I was there. Do you believe that? Well, when I was there and the way that the presentation is, it's like a movie, but it's yeah. a presentation, the whole thing. You're, you're just like literally, it feels like you're in the middle and everything's playing out. Mm -hmm. Like it feels like a freaking matrix. Like this is not real makes you wonder right like if if we get too advanced or if we ever get so advanced to the point where we could recreate what we're living now then it makes you wonder well did somebody recreate yeah. our reality well yeah. that this one ties to because even the smells and, and the feeling of it right the wind the temperature so you experience that inside of the yes, oh yes, i've never been yes. there you feel all that so oh. with that theory there's other stories i heard before of or their advanced or uh, uh, advanced civilizations civilizations being here even before us or being here prior to us so yeah that ties to that one and then maybe even a higher intelligence even yeah. creating something that could be something like this, yeah. this i've seen I, and the, to me that's it's it very it becomes one of those things where i i just kind of once you start going down the rabbit hole yeah. you're just like oh, there's more there's more but one of the things that really catches my attention with what you're just saying about the advanced civilization is um, a lot of these ancient uh, writings with like the, the even even the Aztecs, right? Yep. They they kind of documented certain stories about like certain beings from like people with the, from yeah. the stars yeah. and, and a great flood and all yeah. of them. Every single civilization pretty much has the same story about the yeah. same thing. How crazy is it that right now we can't easily share it in other stuff and, and other people around the world, they can see it, right? Yeah. But how crazy is it that the same cataclysm, the same people from the sky they're all being documented in yeah. like tablets yeah. and stuff like that. Or and it's, it's from places like far across from each other that could have not had like immediate contact. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I'm just saying. We're going to go down the road. Got to believe. <laughs> <laughs> 
when you hear the word Latino, Latina, yeah. Latinx, what immediately comes to mind to you? I think Latino is is a word that I think growing up, more than anything, I think here in the U.S., the the most common thing even in schools is Hispanic, right? That, that's kind of the term that you mm-hmm. know. We, I think we even have to fill that out when we like are going to test the paperwork. Them, I Hispanic, think so. Latino. I think so too. Um, but for me, I mean, it, I just kind of it, it just reminds me of like really everything that um, we go through as Latinos, right. and uh, just even the sacrifice as well that our parents have gone through. So I think the word Latino just it just kind of brings a lot of uh, a lot of pride of like you know I'm a Mexican you know proud Mexican and it just reminds me of like the shared experiences that we all have I think awesome do you consider yourself Latino do you prefer Hispanic Mexican Mexican Mex Mexican 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 <laughs> the I, rap I, the rapper face I Mexican. know hey we had to touch <laughs> that man the, the the rapper version of you that I yeah. saw on uh, on YouTube yeah go check him out he's on YouTube <laughs> um uh, I I I I'd say Mexican, Mexican. I think the word Mexican or just telling people I'm Mexican, it's like, it's like, it's like a sense of, of, of pride that you're just like, you know, and I think yeah. I, as Mexicans, we're like proud of it, you know, because we understand what comes with it, the sacrifice that our parents go through. So I think for me, it's just like I'm Mexican. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people, I've had people that get mad at me when I say that um, I'm Mexican, which is weird. Some people are like, no, oh, you're not Mexican. You're American. You're born here. And I'm like, yeah, but it's like, you know parents are mexican like mexican american i guess they'll tell other people that they see you and all they yeah. see is somebody that's from mexico even yeah, exactly you right it's like well to everybody else i look brown bro <laughs> i mean you know? but yeah i i've i've ran across people like that that they're like no no tú di que tú eres americano. i'm just like all right yeah and chicano does that ever resonate with you at all no not even no no i think um i think just because i'm i'm fluent in spanish uh-huh. i'm fluent in spanish and i grew up speaking it um I'm not the I'm not an Osabo kid. No offense, right? You know, I, I love my Osabo people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I think for me it was it was important to speak it just because my, my dad didn't really speak English very well. And then my mom understood English, but she spoke to us in Spanish. Nos yeah. inculcaron desde chiquitos, like, hey, speak Spanish. Aquí en la casa se habla español. You know, so y, for imagínate, me that resonates a lot. Imagínate qué valioso es eso ahora en día, que puedes yeah. hacer los dos mientras, yeah. like, as, as you're moving through your professional career or yeah. your business in general how you yeah. are able to help two people instead yeah. of just helping one because you don't yeah. know the language or it helps a lot lacking yeah it helps a lot and i think it more than than just um giving me the right tools i think it when you speak to someone in spanish they just kind of see you as somebody that understands them you know and and, yeah. and because it's not the same and I, I and i've seen a lot of companies sometimes whenever they're helping the hispanic community they just put somebody that speaks english and then they just put a translator you know, and it's not the same thing when no, you have someone same. who's actually talking your language and saying, oh, yeah, you te puedo ayudar. You know? There's a non-spoken connection yeah. that happens whenever you, even if it's another Latino, they speak Spanish. If you're in a foreign place, they all of a sudden are like, hey, que pasó? Hey, como como que onda, bro? Like, like, it's like, like a magical moment at times. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow, this, yeah. he understands me. He gets it. Yeah. You know, our culture might be all the way, not 100%, but it's pretty freaking close. Yeah. His upbringing is very similar to yeah. mine. Yeah, so. and, and I think that's what keeps me continuing to try to practice as much as I can. I basically las palabras. Sometimes my pronunciation is not good. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the, the American side of me, you know. Yeah. Sometimes, but at hey, Google, I know, like, ¿Cómo se dice <laughs> ¿Cómo esto? Se dice esto? I'm turning into an osabo. No, you know, have you ever run into where you're looking at a word up and all yeah. of a sudden that doesn't sound like? Just like no, that's it's that's a Google another Translate word for doesn't it. work. It doesn't understand the Spanish, you know, yeah. that we speak. Sabes que usado? You know what I use? ChatGPT, but instructed to say in Mexican. Bro, I swear, <laughs> me I do. Too. Because it's different. <laughs> yeah. The, the translation of the word, it gives you like what you're looking for yeah. instead of people just to ask it to translate yeah. this or word. Or sometimes I put, speak to me as if you're speaking to a Mexican. Yeah. And then it, it talks to you in, in more understandable Spanish. It's terms. Yeah. Because yeah. if not, it gives you that Spain Spanish. Yeah. And then yeah. you're talking to somebody. ¿Qué yeah. dijo esto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oiga, señor, no lo entiendo. Mm, es yo, yo sé que está hablando español, pero no es español. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get to you, your story. Yeah. All right. So... Tell me a little bit about your, so you, your family's from Monterrey, yeah. both your ma- mom and your dad. My dad is from Monterrey, Nuevo León, uh-huh. and my mom is from Tampico, Tamaulipas. ¿Y se conocieron aquí en, la, uh, en Dallas o en México? Here. Here, here, here. yeah. yeah so here. My, my mom, when she was younger, um, she was brought over here, and then my father ended up coming over here también, and then uh, they ended up meeting here. Cool. Do you know a little bit of the story of their uh, travels from Mexico to here? How, how Why did they come? Why M- they Mainly to- for my dad. For uh-huh. my dad, because... Um, my the way that I think my dad experienced it was was a little bit different than my mom. Right. Um. But my dad's stories that were always more present, just because I uh, I would ask him questions like, "Hey, man, how how was it?" You know, and he, and he would tell me pretty much 
some of the some of the crazy stories that that he would have and and me platicaba a veces que se venía eh, para acá y no por el río nadando a veces eh, en el desierto so you know, he just, he's just by himself or uh, con, well con with other people con el coyote y todos you know with but, everybody but they'll still make it like either because there's different ways to get here people I don't know if y'all know this all this wall talk is retarded yeah. because you can either go to the desert or yeah. go to the river yeah 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 and I and I think back then it was is I want to say it was a little bit easier but I think it was it was there was may, maybe different ways to do it yeah yeah but he would he would talk to me and he would tell me how like you know a veces también los 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 coyotes would kind of do them wrong yeah los los hacían dar vueltas nada más to help them kill time los trataban de abandonar and stuff and things like that and they had to tell me how some sometimes even in the winter time you know they'd sleep out on the desert and uh, they'd kind of sleep in people's like backyards and stuff so yeah I think that's why it's so present because I kind of remember those stories that he would tell me yeah why did you want to ask them those stories some some kids some might might want to know yeah their parents maybe not be willing to share yeah you know it might be kind of hard to even ask those questions yeah what made you want to drive to ask them those questions well i think i think for me it's because i mean growing up I, i've always been close to both my parents um but i was always closer to my dad um so growing up i kind of i kind of was uh iba con él. my dad was a jeweler his entire life oh wow so, repara hacia reparación de joyería. the Gio. best jeweler i'd say ever I believe you um mm -hmm. because he he just kind of learned the craft and he did that most of my life so whenever we were younger la acompañaba like to the flea market y él se ponía, like, with his little table and with his little rotulo yeah. that said, you know, reparación de joyería. And uh, as a kid, man, as, like, a two-year-old, three-year-old, I would be there right next to him. And, and he would fix the jewelry, clean it, mm -hmm. y luego yo con un cepito, bro, like, lo tallaba, you know, and, and me daban propina and stuff. Really? So, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so growing up, like, I, I experienced that aspect of, of our life, especially with my dad. So I, it kind of was more natural for me to kind of wonder and be curious, like, hey, you know, well, how did all this get started? You know, like, ¿cómo tuvo tu historia? But um, even up to when when I you know when I grew up, he he kind of did that most of my life. So I think that's where the the interest came. You know, wanting to figure out, hey, where did it all get started? Yeah, was it his own company or did he work for yeah. a company? So he did it for himself. He did mm -hmm. it for himself. My dad, my dad was always uh, he's an entrepreneur. I was always an entrepreneur. Um, he was always kind of like go to and and motivated to you know to to be out there and just yeah. grind it you know i think that's where i get a lot of uh, a lot of those qualities, a lot of yeah. those qualities just... and your mom uh pretty much brought over as a as a young lady and yes yeah. that was pretty much it yeah Anything so interesting about hers yeah so my mom my mom had a uh, an interesting life to men because even even here she was brought up when she was younger um so i think it's 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 also even difficult if you think about it like when you're brought over here you kind of have to adapt yourself to the yeah. lifestyle here so yeah. i think for her that was one of the biggest challenges trying to adapt from the lifestyle that you had and just kind of being you know brought up in that part of mexico and then adapting yourself here um but i think luckily for her she was able to pick up on on english a, mm -hmm. a lot faster so my mom she speaks it but she prefers not to i think she's like <laughs> the mexican area like, well, no. you know maybe just... no i think she she just sometimes for Spanish, I think. She's really good at speaking English. Sometimes it's like, hey, mom, you know. You know Get you down, can, mama. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, you know the, the hood slang. What's going on? Yeah. No, but yeah, she, she her, her life was also interesting too. And I think from, from her, what I um I kind of picked up on, on her side of the story or her, or her life growing up was kind of more of that, um, that willingness to always keep pushing forward. You know, that, that um, I think most Latina mothers, I think we've all seen, hard workers yeah har hardest workers out there yeah. you know they're just grinding it out you know whether it is one job two jobs at once so i think seeing it from both sides of my family my mom and my dad i think it's what really kind of helped me kind of be try to be somewhat of a hard worker as they've been you know i can't compare to them i think it's different when you're born here it's not the same drive and motivation yeah but i try as much as i can to just kind of live up to that that's awesome the so anything significant as you were growing up as far as of course they they molding you pretty much without realizing you as a kid seeing the way they're moving and see how hard they work. Was there anything significant as far as going to school? Anything that stands out to you as far as maybe you want to maybe be an entrepreneur, maybe have your own thing at one time or another? Yeah, I think um I think that the entire journey of like I said, experienced that with my dad, just kind of being there, kind of made me. My dad was always the type to tell me like, hey, you know, it's, it's uh, one. My dad always wanted me to continue his his business his craft mm. of jewelry you okay. know but i think as a kid i think sometimes we're naive and we don't see the value and importance of uh, some of those some of those skills that our parents have right. and i think that's what the case for me i was like nah, i don't want to be a joyero you know i want to do something else you know but i think what what made me want to figure something out was that idea of like i i grew up with my dad always 
telling me like, you know, para toy solution, you know, there's a, we can figure this out. We can always do it. Yeah. And seeing that, like I said, from my mom and my dad, you know, so I think for me, my entire life was kind of more of like, hey, if, if there isn't a way, let's make one, mm -hmm. you know? So whenever I started learning or, or trying to explore the entrepreneur life, which is a difficult one, you know, I see a lot of people sometimes they, they idolize the idea of, 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 of um, entrepreneurship because they're like, oh, it's like financial freedom. And, and it's like, sometimes you end up working more than the average person, <laughs> you know, like people try to sell you on this, like, oh, you quit your nine to five and become an entrepreneur. Yeah. You're quitting your nine to five to work like a 12 to 12, you know, cause you're working like, <laughs> 12 to 12. yeah, you're working crazy hours. So, um, I think for, for me, when I started going through that journey of trying to figure it out, it was always like, well, you know, I, I saw my dad doing it and I saw my mom also doing it. So yeah. Maybe I'm maybe I'm cut out for this, and and I decided to do it. Yeah. So did they ever push you trying to go to school? Because eventually you made your way to school to college yeah. Yeah, to try to explore something. Yeah. What 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 did they tell you in like as far as going to college, go to college? Yeah. So my 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 family dynamic was a little bit different mm -hmm. than most. I think. Well, I, I mean, I guess it depends what most is right. But for me, my parents split up at a young age. So mm -hmm. my parents split up when I was like around eleven. So from there, I ended up kind of going with, to live with my dad. And, and my dad was kind of, you know, trying to, to help us with college and stuff. And, and the motivation or I guess the encouragement was always there. But the decision was mine at the end of the day, you know. And, and so what I ended up doing is I ended up um, uh, just figuring out, like, what could pay me enough to be able to put myself to college. Um, my dad encouraged me as much as he could and helped me as much as he could. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I kind of had to see how I was going to pay for it, you know. And what was the, uh, at that time, the interest of studying? What did you want to study at that time? Was it marketing a thing nah, that you wanted to? I wanted psychology. To be a, I wanted to be a counselor. Why did you want to be a counselor? Where did the, it was the money thing? Well, was no, it? I think, well, I wanted to do um, psychology because mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of being able to help people. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think a lot of us, sometimes we struggle with finding a sense of purpose. And for me, it was like, well, well, I kind of have this life experience where my parents look split up at a young age. I kind of had the ups and downs of life, you right. know, emotionally. And, and, and I just, there was kind of that journey that I just didn't know why a lot of things happened in my life. So I was like, maybe I can be the voice of reason for some people. Mm -hmm. Maybe for some people I can be that person that could help guide them in through, through those situations that I right. experienced. So for me, the idea of being a psychologist was being somebody else's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but then uh, reality hit me and I was like, dude, I have my own problems. I, I, don't, think, <laughs> I don't think I'll be cut out to help people with their problems. Um, but I think, it, it, it almost, I almost pivoted in, and I said, well, you know, maybe I won't be able to help people as a psychologist, mm -hmm. but maybe I can help people in, in, in their entrepreneurship journey. You okay. know, maybe some type of consulting or some type of right. uh, strategy, even if it's for free, I just want to help people in some way or form. So that's kind of why I went from, okay, psychology um, to just, all right, let's just figure this out in marketing. As you're in school and you're figuring all this out, because it takes a big person to realize, like, I have my own situations that I have to address. Maybe in order to help other people, I had to get this sorted out. So yeah. it's best for me to go a different approach. Was it the being in school in general and just learning that it's, it's difficult? Maybe yeah. that's not going to be the road for you? I think the, the, the work-life balance or even, I guess, school-life balance, you know, the balance yeah. of juggling, like, your actual reality, which is, like, yo, we got all that stuff going on sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then also the idea of, like, wanting to do more for other people. Right. I think at some point you kind of come to the realization, well, what am I doing for me? You know, and, and, and I kind of realized that, well, I could be more helpful to people if I really figured myself out and really kind of went through the journey of uh, putting myself in a better position where I could help people, mm -hmm. you know, because I think sometimes um, I, I've fallen into that where like you're helping, giving, 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 but sometimes you don't even, it comes to the point that you don't have much to give at some point because you're just kind of giving your all, you know? So for me, it was like, well, if I want to help people, I need to be in a better position, you right. know, whether it's helping people financially, whether it's helping my family or helping people in general with. With something, I kind of be. I need to be a little bit better off. So for me, it was like, okay, maybe, maybe school is kind of draining a little bit of my resources, is draining a little bit of my time, um, and and I continued. You know, I went through um, uh, financial aid help. You know, yeah, I went through financial course. aid. It, it helped me. I I did. Um, I went to Eastfield. Did two years of uh, uh, an associates there. I got some certifications in substance abuse and mental health through Eastfield, and then from there, I went to. Um, University of Texas, Dallas, and I uh, did bachelor's in uh, psychology, split with sociology. So you did get so, your degree. Yeah, yeah so I finished. I finished. Awesome. All that to say I finished, and but I, I didn't really do much with the degree. It was more of like a sense of accomplishment because I'm just like, well, you know, I, I started it and I think my parents would be proud if I finished. So. How, how does it feel whenever you get to, even though it's a struggle, even though you realize and all these things that maybe 
you're not going to be able to exercise what you're studying because of all the things that are starting coming up. Yeah. You start thinking about how does it feel at the end whenever you get to graduate? Um, well, not honestly, I think it should have felt greater, mm -hmm. but I think it was more of like, I kind of had already made the decision of like, maybe, maybe I just don't want to do psychology. So I don't have to finish it. Um, but I was, I was definitely happy that I finished because it's just like weight off your shoulder. It's just Absolutely. like, all right, we're done. Um, but then from there it was like figuring out, okay, what's the next step for me? You know, yeah. do I just get a job in this? I mean, I mean, when you think about it, psychology, sociology, you can't really get a, like an actual corporate job with it. I mean, <laughs> I guess you could, but it's not something like very interesting to me as far as the, the choices that were there. So I just kind of, from there, I had to figure out what was next, you know? Yeah. So I went into not, YouTube and I- Not even schooling or maybe uh, be a counselor in school or yeah. elementary schools. It yeah. just wasn't something that you wanted to do it's, at the time. It's not something that interested me at that point at anymore that. because I think I had gone to, I had gone through the point where I just, I just felt like, you know what? I want to do more, you know? And, and, and I think growing up, that was always my mindset of like, you know, maybe I'm meant for something, you know? I was always like fascinated by the comic books, you know? Uh, the Flash was my superhero, oh, yeah. Spider-Man, you know, Superman. And I think that fascination came from like a, almost like a, a place within myself where I, I kind of wanted to feel like a superhero and do something great for people. Right, right. So I think for me, when I kind of realized that, man, maybe I won't be able to do it so much in psychology, mm -hmm. let's just try something else. So that's why I didn't pursue it. And I just figured something uh, else out. Yeah. How do your parents feel whenever you get to see your, their son graduate? I don't, I don't know if you're the first one or not. Yeah. But... Well, I didn't let them know. Really? Yeah. Why yeah. is that? I, I, so whenever, whenever my parents were up at a young age, I... I kind of went through this, through this phase as a, as a teen where I just kind of didn't know what, where to place the blame. And I had a lot of internal battles as a kid growing up where it was just like maybe a sense of frustration because of how just life plays out with your parents. I mean, who doesn't as a kid, who doesn't right. want to have both of their parents go to their, you know, um, you know, what do they call it? The graduation. The graduation or, 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 or teacher parent conference. Yeah, of course. You know? or any of those you know, events. Every kid, you know, yeah, wants yeah. that. So I think for me, it was kind of almost like that battle of frustration where it's like, because I didn't get it, it was kind of almost like, well, I was just frustrated and I wasn't able to nurture a good relationship with them growing up, which I think it's one of the biggest mistakes that I think any any kid could make. Um, and I think sometimes, like I said, we're naive and we're just kind of almost selfish as kids. So for me, I didn't really have that relationship growing up with them. Right. And then you fast forward to when I graduated high school, uh, I ended up moving out at 18. So from 18 to, I won't say my age now, but from, <laughs> <laughs> but from 18 to like whenever I put myself through college and everything, it was kind of just me figuring life out, trying to survive. Mm. And, and, and I also made the same mistake of not really nurturing that relationship with my parents. So whenever I got to the point where I was done with college, I was like, well, I'm not really close to them anyways. And, and it wasn't, nobody knew really. I think maybe just now, you know, people are finding out that I actually put myself through college and then I graduated. It's just kind of more of like, I was just kind of on my own since 18, awesome. you know. Congratulations, bro. I appreciate it's, it, yeah. it's amazing that I, I get it, right? Of the ways the things that you the things that happen sometimes it's not necessary cuz you've done it all on your own. Why does anybody need yeah. to know at the end of the day? But yeah. it's, it's awesome that you're able to do but it. But they're proud now. I think awesome. as as far as like where I'm at and and where I've kind of been able to overcome some challenges when I do talk well when I've had these conversations with them about yeah. like some of the things that I have, like the plans and the goals, like they're always excited about. That's yeah, awesome. They've always been excited okay. about. Okay, so at one time, things got really difficult for you uh, mentally. Different things, challenges were happening to the point where you ended up even homeless. That yeah, was a tough one, man. You, almost a year. What happened exactly that you were not able to maintain a, a place to stay? Like, Yeah, I was broke, man. You were just yeah. playing broke. I think even I, though you were working, not working? Yeah, or? so it, it was kind of almost a, a transition in my life. Um, where I was kind of, it's sometimes, you know, life hits you from every angle. And you're just like, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, for me, it was kind of, yeah. it was one of those instances where, you know, I was, I was in a bad relationship, you know, and, and, and that was going downhill. Um, and then from there, I, I kind of had some issues with, um, my, my father at the time was experiencing some, some health issues. And then I had some family as well, um, problems that were arising. And then from there, I just had unstable, un, unstable employment. Um, and I kind of, kind of everything got together to the point where I just couldn't really even concentrate at the, at the job that I was at. And I was just kind of going through this like dark moment. I was kind of, mm -hmm. you know, kind of sad all the time and stuff. And it got to the point where I just ended up losing my job. And I, it was right around the time where my lease needed to renew for my apartment. So I remember when, whenever all that happened, I was like, oh, you're going to said, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I need to, I need to get yeah. stuff done. And I always knew that, I, okay, the worst that could happen is like, 
I go homeless and I live out of my car for a little bit. You know, it's like <laughs> that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly what happened. <laughs> but it's like I guess I always had the mindset of like, all right, I guess it's not that bad. You know, who hasn't lived in their car before? Um, but I did. Oh wow, maybe like yeah. a day. Lucky you're you sleeping uh, on my car. Oh, you, you slept. Yeah, sometimes that's right. It, yeah, you know. Yeah, I did almost for a year, man. It was crazy tough. Thing, but bro. yeah, but it, it kind of was almost one of those things where it just life hit me from every angle, man. Of course, financially, emotionally, uh, family wise, and and I think. I mean, because I moved out at 18 at such a young age, it kind of almost was an ego thing to reach out for help. Mm, um, and it was yeah. kind of almost like, I didn't want to tell no one. I didn't want to tell nobody I was struggling. It was embarrassing, bro. Like, imagine that. Like, you know, for you to kind of go from the point where you're kind of doing good and then you're just like, you're just dead rogue, you know? So for me, it was kind of almost like a lot of things. And uh, yeah, man, I ended up just kind of saying, well, you know what, man? I can't afford this apartment no more. You know, I'm not going to renew my lease. So I ended up not release, uh, renewing my lease. Um, and at the time I had a little, uh, a Chevy Malibu that I got out of CarMax, yeah. uh, which broke down eventually. Um, but, um, yeah. And, and I was just, I was just there living out of my car. You oh. see Lisa, bro? I was, I was there. I spent yeah. summers, winters. Um, and pretty much I, I had a gym membership, like at Planet Fitness for like 10 bucks. And then I pretty much just sleep in my car. I would sleep right next to a uh, uh, 24 hour fitness. Cause what's interesting is that you don't realize how many people actually live in their car until you're living in your car. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started find, trying to find a place to stay at night where I was like, oh, that guy's sleeping in his car too. Let me stay right here and park next to him. So you, I'd go like to like Walmart parking lots. I'd go through like 24-hour fitness or fitness connections and things like that. And yeah, I kind of started being more self-aware of that. And I was like, well, I guess, I guess I'm not alone, you know? There's That's a homeless crazy. guy next to me. That's wild. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't realize that happened. So yeah. pretty much it feels like rock bottom. Everything's against you and everything. How, what makes you want to keep pushing? Of course, I know. Yes, most likely our ego gets on the way of yeah. like, hey, you've been doing it by yourself all this time. All of a sudden, you're going to reach out for help. You figure a way to do it, right? But still, yeah. right? You seem like you might have been going through some depression and stuff. How do you yeah. push through it? I think there was moments where I, I'll be honest, man. And it's the thing that I think maybe a lot of us men don't really admit to sometimes. Right. And it, it's kind of one of those moments where I, I kind of, I just needed to to actually break down and let the emotions out, you know? And mm -hmm. I think when I would have those moments, like living out of my car, man, I remember just kind of like at nights, bro. And I just be like crying. Just yeah. be like, man, like, why is this happening to me? You know? And knowing that there's always a solution is what, what kept me trying to figure it out. Um, but I think mostly was, um, I just have conversations with God, man. And I've never really been like a religious person, but I've always believed in, in a higher power. And, mm -hmm. and, and growing up, I, I, was I was raised um, to be a specific religion, but then I, I started, I got introduced to, to Christianity and, and, I, and that's kind of the avenue that I took my faith, you mm -hmm. know, because that was what has been truth for me. And at the time, I just remember just remembering like the times that I, I would go to church and I'd pray and I was like, well, maybe if you're listening, you know, let me just have this conversation with you, God. And, yeah. and I would, man, I'd, I'd have like the most honest conversations. And I think that um, venting and, and just wanting to believe that there was somebody listening and wanting to believe that my story at maybe one day could help one person right. go through the situations is what kind of helped me just kind of keep pushing forward, you know? And, 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 and I think uh, also having, having faith in general, I think it's, it's a good thing, you know? And, and I think it's one of those things where it's like, you need it to get through some of the hardest moments in your life. And uh, I think that's what really helped me just kind of believing in God and, and believing that there was something else that I needed to do in my life. And, yeah. And we made it, man. After awesome. a while, after some time, I ended up, um, I ended up finding a job at a, at a call center while I was still shout living in my car. Shout out to the call centers. Yeah, yeah shout I out to the call I worked there center. for years. Yeah. And it was the dopest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. They All pay, I need yeah. to do is sit there and talk to people. Okay. That's it. Yeah, right? It's like our <laughs> life, bro. Right. So I enjoyed it, man. And then from there, poco a poquito me fui levantando. Um, and then from there, I mean, we started transitioning into, into just kind of figuring all this marketing stuff out. Um, yeah. But it was it was an interesting journey, man. It was for sure. It was a it was a tough one, but uh, but it was worth it. Yeah. So you find a few people that um, are interested in investing in something that you have because they oh, see a yeah. lot of potential in you, right? Yeah. So the so put a chat on the quote me, unquote bro. investors. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you already create your company, Hispanos Marketing? Mm -hmm. And I, and I know there's a a different company that you have now that you. I seen on the feed uh, something on uh, Latinos. Okay, USA. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So you t when does the name start? Hispanos. Why did you want to go with Hispanos? Was it during that time with those investors, or was something different? No, so that was that was an interesting okay. situation. I'm telling you, it's like a, my life's a roller coaster, bro. Because um, 
cuando me estaba reponiendo and everything was going a little bit better. I had found a job at that, at that call center. Uh, life was going a little bit better. I was living my best life getting $15 an hour, bro. You know, not a lot, but to me, bro, living out of your car, now you're making 15. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, um, but yeah, I was, I was, me estaba reponiendo and I was slowly working my way up, you know, the corporate ladder. I was like, maybe I could do more here at, at this call center. Um, but then I, I met some people through some connections who were interested in, in my talents. Mm. Uh, because considering that even though I was kind of going through this, these hard times, um, many, many years I had already been uh, doing a little bit of, of digital marketing work, you know, like small logos here and there. How did you get into that? I learned on YouTube. Just yeah, you so, learned it. Why yeah, do you so, want to learn on YouTube how to make a logo? Yeah. So whenever, whenever I, I kind of went to live on my own at 18, um, I, I kind of had already came to that realization of like, maybe psychology is not going to be it for me, mm -hmm. but I wanted to continue. But I was like, at least I need to have a backup plan and maybe the degree is the backup plan. And I started learning on YouTube how to like design stuff. I just wanted to figure out how I could make money online. Nice. And I remember, I was like, maybe I can start like a, a blog, an online blog or something. Um, and then I realized you can't really make a lot of money off of it. I remember <laughs> I, I created one and I was trying to do these viral news. I made like 20 bucks in like three months. I was like, all right, this ain't it. 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Though. Hey, but in three months, man. <laughs> three months, I love that. Yeah. Time. So, but then I realized, well, I created this website blog. Maybe I can offer this service to someone. Maybe they, I can make a website for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I did. I mean, slowly I started getting one customer here and there. And, and, and while I was doing like, you know, the, some of the work that I was doing. How did you find these customers? So how did they find um, you? Through connections like church and stuff. I yeah. mean, hey man, I've been doing websites for church. Like, a veces les avientes un rollo. Oh, te puedo ayudar. You know, you're being truthful because you know you can help them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you got to sell yourself. So yeah. for me, it was like, like, oh, te puedo ayudar con tu página web, you know. De, you can't negocio. be like, yo te puedo hacer una. Yeah, es que like, no yeah, sé. Man, yo te la hago. Yeah, yeah. Perrona con Exactamente. fireworks y toda la cosa. Yeah, <laughs> y que salga tu foto, te hace un profesional y todo. Yeah, todo. So, so for me, it was kind of, that was kind of the best way of selling myself and, and I was able to do it. But throughout the transition, yeah, I, I kind of knew a little bit of, uh, I learned on YouTube, self-taught, how to design websites, um, logos, um, how to implement marketing strategies. I went to YouTube Academy. Yeah. Did you see? Brief interruption to let you know, I know that you are enjoying the episode. If you are, hit the subscribe button, give us a comment, give us a like. Thank you very much for being here. And now, back to the episode. Kind of sort of see yourself, the way that you talk to people, try to get clients the way that you that used to do when he was out there hustling and talking yeah. to people. Yeah, I, th I think for me, that's what, anytime that I talk to anyone, it was like, it was almost like I was mirroring like my dad's hustle, yeah. you know? And, and even when I would talk to people, I would kind of, it, what, they would just remind me of, of, of my, my dad, like, you know, Spanish speaker out there trying to grind and hustle. So I'd be like, ¿Cómo está, guy? No se preocupe, yo le ayudo con confianza. O a veces le say, ah, sí. Les hablas así normal y como que they're like, oh, this guy, you know, he's trying to help me, you know? Take care of me. Yeah. So for me, yeah, it was, it was that. I was always like, okay, mirroring, like, what I grew up around. But, um, but yeah, so backtrack a little bit. So I ended up uh, out of the call center. Um, I ended up meeting, I was getting them back on my feet and I, I ended up meeting those uh, people that were, interested in my skills that they they kind of saw potential in me and they were like hey you know what they proposed and actually it's because i ended up while i was still working at the call center i ended up going to their they owned a restaurant mm. so i ended up going to the restaurant to sell myself and say hey you know what if you ever need anything call me and i give them my business card they called me and they're like hey by the way we just started this restaurant but we thought it would be a great idea for us to start an internal marketing company so we can do our own marketing for the restaurant mm -hmm. and then take on external customers which I was like, hey, it's not a bad idea, right? As long as you're funding and you're paying for your own marketing, right? Because you can't funnel a free service, right? If you're starting a business, you have to pay the business to promote your own business. So yeah. they kind of positioned it to where it seemed all nice. They're like, yeah, you know, we're going to fund you for a whole year. We're going to pay your salary. Any red flags at all during these conversations? There was, there man. But, you know, sometimes you're just blinded by the dollar signs. You're like, oh, I'm going to make it. And I think for me, it was almost like I saw my breakthrough. Mm. Like, wow. Oh, yeah, like you say, you know, they, they, they believe in me. I know my stuff and, and, and they're funding everything. I'm not taking any losses. All I'm putting is my time. Yeah, of course, you know. Um, so well, they're not going to compensate you at all. Uh, so they were. Yeah. So that, that was another thing, too, that they were going to they were going to match the same amount of money that I was making at the call center. Mm. So they were just like, and I didn't ask for anything more, bro. I was like, you know, bien. like pay me what I'm making to do what I love or what I've found a passion for now. Yeah, let's go for it. So we did it. And then um, they they funded us to, uh, to, to hire two more, two more people, a designer and then a front desk person who was going to mm. help with sales and strategy. Uh, so we got an office space, you know, they got a furniture and everything. 
And uh, yeah, man, the first month we were just kind of like trying to make sales, strategize and stuff. And then the next month comes around and they're just like, hey, unfortunately, we're going to have to pull the plug on you, you know? And then, then we're just like, we don't understand, they don't understand why. But I guess from there, they, one of the biggest things is that they just didn't have a good management of their finances to the point where they're like, oh, by the way, we're going to have to close the marketing agency down. You're fired, fire them. And nos vemos. So... Pretty much, man. I I was left with, and at the time, también había sacado unas credit cards to to pay for like, to get some like cameras and stuff. So me endeudé, bro. Me endeudé para sacar unas 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 uh, cameras and to then with the marketing. And yeah, for for the marketing. Yeah, because I think because they had already were funding. I was like, well, the least that I can do is pay for some cameras a crédito. Um, pero me dejaron con la deuda, bro. <laughs> me dejaron con la deuda de la credit card. Mm. Um, they owed me the salary for that month, bro. Like it was like a couple grand. Uh, on top of that, and then, yeah, but then back to square one. Yeah. Ay, vamos otra vez, downhill. Y luego, Wolf. you go back to finding a job, you make a yeah. breakthrough, say, sabes que, I was doing it with them, I could do it myself, yeah. or what happens? Yeah, I think I think I I I felt that, uh, I mean, stuff like that pisses you off. You know, of you're just like, man, like, it's crazy, because you knew that there's potential, you knew that there's, they just didn't believe in you, they just weren't patient, you know, so I was like, man, maybe I could do this by myself, and then uh, I decided to do it, I I ended up registering. Um, uh, I had a couple names before. A couple names okay, before that. Tell me. We shall not speak of. You're not going to talk about them. They're not marketable. Well, okay, still, okay. We'll, we'll say, say what you're they right. were. They're not. They're not useful. So, anyway. um, so back in the days when I just didn't really have a lot of marketability, I was uh -huh. like, well, let me come up with a creative name. So it's kind of embarrassing, bro. But it was uh, it was Turbo Biz. Or turbo, turbo Biz. Turbo Isn't that biz. like a Turbo Tax? Exactly. You were biting off I, of it? I was biting off of it. <laughs> Don't sue me. It was never a business. <laughs> it, never, it, never, <laughs> it never took it off. Never, what other ones? Um, so Turbo Biz was one. Uh, I did, um, uh, one of them was a weird name. I just, I, I, I bought the domain and because it was, it was a short domain. It was Dixie Fi, like, mm. like Pixie, but it was Dixie Fi. Um, has nothing to do with marketing, but I just wanted to play around with the name. Uh, I had CR Creative Studio at one point. I had um, WebXP at some point. But then I just, I just, none of these names were really kind of delivering what I wanted to do and who I wanted to help, which I think it's important. So your market was Latinos, Hispanic yeah. It people. was always that. It was so always that. So when does, of course, trial and error mini names, none of them stick in, nothing's what you're trying to do. Y luego, Hispanos marketing. Yeah. Where does that come from? So Hispanos Marketing Group is um, soon after, I think the last name that I had um, was CR Creative Studio. Soon after, I was like, well, you know what? I, I want to be able to deliver who I'm helping and, and why I'm doing this in the name. So mm -hmm. I figured, um, why not name who I'm trying to help, the Hispanic community? You know, so I, I said, you know what? Hispanos Marketing Group, um, it could kind of have two meanings. Either we're a Hispanic marketing group or Hispanos Marketing Group, right? That's helping people. Mm -hmm. or we're focus on helping the Hispanic community, uh, which is really both aspects of what I do. Yeah. So I ended up checking for availability, checking for the domain, checking everything. And, and yeah, I got the business registered. And um, from there, I've been operating as Hispanos Marketing Group. And, and, and it, I think it's a great representation of, of what I do and why I do it. And then from there, surge lo que viene siendo el nombre Contratista Latino USA. Contratito, Contratistas Latino USA. It's a tongue twister. USA. Contratista Latino USA, which yeah. is, uh, which is, it's, it's a, it's more of like um, a sub name to Hispanos Marketing Group. Um, the main reason was because I noticed that with Hispanos Marketing Group, I started getting a lot of um, more established American-based companies that were English speaking, wanting to tap into the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. So they would reach out to me under Hispanos Marketing Group. Um, but not the people you're trying to help. Um, Even though there's money there, but yeah, not yeah, the exactly, you exactly. Help. So I'll them. take it though. You know, anybody, <laughs> Hispanic marketing group, we can help you reach the Hispanic <laughs> community. Um, but yeah, so it, yeah, it kind of it kind of starts turning into well, well now the other people are finding you because as we mentioned before when we started, they see the the power within the Hispanic community, the consumering power. So they're like, hey, we need somebody that mm -hmm. understands the Hispanic community, understands the culture, who better than Hispanic marketing group? It's in their name. So um, that's kind of what I started noticing. But then I was like, you know what? But I want to help the Hispanic community. Like, I want to help people in Spanish and Espanol. Quiero tener conversaciones en Espanol, ayudar a mi gente. So I was like, well, what if we do just kind of a subsection, a subname, which is Contratista Latino USA. Mm -hmm. um, and the focus of that has been to help um, Hispanic-owned contractors. Contractors. Uh, contractors. Solamente, not any other type. I you, help anyone. You, you help anyone. But yeah. your key market, who you want to help. Yeah. Why the why are the contractors? Yeah. I think, I think there's, there's, it resonates with, with 
it just growing up, I think my, my dad was always a key. He was a, he was a key um, point in my life. Mm-hmm. So kind of seeing all those uh, elements of, of, of my dad and other people, it, it kind of has helped me to just kind of continue to want to help. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad passed away this year in January. So Very sorry for you. yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's been more of an incentive for me to, to help, you know, because it just kind of reminds me of the point where, where my dad was at and he needed that help. So the Hispanic contractor is typically your traditional old school Hispanic man, mm-hmm. you know, who, uh, maybe sometimes he's, he doesn't understand the digital aspect of things. So you have to have more patience and you have to just not necessarily sell to them, but try to educate them in a way where they feel in confianza. And they're like, esta persona me quiere ayudar. So, and, and I started noticing that, um, I started getting a lot of good traction with the Hispanic community and especially contractors like, me tenían confianza. They're just like, ah, sabes que no te entiendo lo que me estás diciendo, pero te tengo confianza porque mm-hmm. me lo estás explicando y tienes esa transparencia. So I was like, well, why not just narrow down my audience? You know, I don't have to be an octopus trying to get everywhere, everyone. And, and I think sometimes that, that can be something that hinders you too, mm-hmm. you know, because when you try to spread yourself too wide, sometimes... Too thin, too. I, too thin, yeah. A veces hacemos mucho. Bueno, like I've said, a veces hago mucho, pero a la vez no hago nada. Nada. Porque ando tratando de que este cliente, que este por acá. But then when I was like, you know what? I just want to narrow down the people that I help. I know what works for them. I know what kind of presentation they need as far as construction companies, remodeling agencies. I know the type of websites that we can make. I know the type of logos that we can make. Why not just narrow it down? And and yeah, I've been fortunate enough to to have customers across the U.S., man, uh, across the United States. I've, I, contractors from mostly every state reach out uh, through some ads and some promos that we have going on online. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, I think it it's it's not shocking, but I'm I'm very grateful that people trust me. People trust me. And I think it has to do a little bit with what we talked about. It's a, it's, it's a confianza de, de continue, for us to continue to just kind of be proud of our culture and, yeah. and not be afraid to speak the language, I think it's what's helped me. That's great because I don't doubt that there that community is underserved with those particular uh, the presence on lo- yeah. online. Yeah, if anybody wants to work with them, yeah, especially somebody that's you know big companies, big projects, extremely underserved. They want to see somebody like they're not gonna go to wherever they're at and kind of talk to them. They have to. They have to be put in their faces. Yeah, look, mira lo que estoy haciendo. Yeah. Look what are we doing. Yeah, no, y lo que he visto también que funciona muy bien con los contratistas es that. Muchos de ellos son bien movidos. Like, they're, they're motivated, bro. They're contractors. And, and that's what I admire about just the Latino entrepreneur. We're grinding. We're grinding. And I noticed yeah. that a lot of these contractors, le están echando ganas, bro. Están repartiendo tarjetas. Están pidiendo referencias. They're going to networking events. Están tomando clases de inglés. But sometimes the only thing that they're missing is that professional presentation. Mm-hmm. Their online image, you know. Um, and what, what often happens, and I notice especially with Hispanic business owners in general, mm-hmm. sometimes we cut corners because we don't understand the importance of different aspects of our, our online presence. So we end up hiring somebody to design business cards that they just use the template. Y nos pusieron ahí una casita, un martillito, cualquier cosita, and they just pretty much sold it to you, but they sold it to 10 other people. Mm-hmm. And what ends up happening is that you're not really setting yourself apart from the competition. And I run into this day in and day out. Que a veces me dicen, ah, ya tengo un logo. Ah, pues mándamelo. And it's the same logo that Para somebody todo. else had. Yeah. Como 20 condenados. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then this right here, like, this is all here. Everything yeah. is, like, right here. Like, yeah. all your calling card of your website, yeah. everything's yeah. right you're, here. You're more easily accessible when exactly. you have that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the Hispanic community, man, we're, we've been underserved. And, and I think it's a little bit of everything. And that's it's really why I decided to really go all in, bro. Because if you think about it, a lot of the... American-based agencies, right, that are primarily English-speaking, they're not investing funds and resources into the Hispanic community. If they are, they're just trying to sell you something. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to sell you a service. They're not trying and to educate you. Exactly. Sell you yeah. And not really tell you the reason why you want to. Exactly. You know? and, and I know this because of all the contractors that I've talked to. I have, like, close to 2,000 uh, contacts in, 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 in my uh, database where I've talked to the majority of these people. Right. And the thing that I always hear is, like, es que... Nada más me quieren meter un servicio a las otras agencias. No, no me lo explican bien o no son transparentes. A veces nada más quieren que les dé la tarjeta y, y me siguen cobrando. And those are the experiences that sometimes make it difficult, make it more challenging. But I think it makes it rewarding as well because you spend so much time educating to the point where now they trust you and they're like, do business with you long term. Yeah, absolutely. That's, <clears throat> I mean, it's great that people like you exist because they see that we... We're leaving. We're being left behind. Yeah. We're not being having all those amazing 
beautiful websites and, and apps and stuff like that instead of uh, and missing out on some money. Where we do the work is already the the work that they do is already great work. I say yeah. this, right? You just need to let people know yeah. that they're doing it. You they're still doing it, it, but yeah. scale up more. They can do a whole lot more, bigger yeah. contracts, bigger things. If they just have the look, yeah, it's crazy. They will live in a world that you have to have the look too. Yeah. Not only the work, but yeah. the look, and you look savage. You look serious to be yeah. able to people to take you. It makes sense. Yeah, but still, you have it's to tough. have that too. And it's tough whenever. Um, you're not accustomed to it um, as a community where it's just like it's not normal to you porque casi la mayoría están acostumbrados a ten aquí tengo fotos en mi teléfono o aquí tengo mi, mi tarjeta nada más so it's tough whenever you're kind of helping them transition because yeah. sometimes they still don't see the value um, but I think for the most part I mean the more time that we spend trying to educate and, and help people I think the more that you know we start helping our community in general Mm -hmm. um and so that's why i do it i mean i think i think most of the time bro, i spend most of the time just talking to people honestly than than selling and i think that's why a lot of people sometimes are just like ah si sí, te voy a recomendar a tal persona because you're the go-to guy pero si fun like what they say and they turn the picture it si funciona up to a point pero si yeah. quieres crecer más si quieres yeah. ser más grande si quieres hacer más más trabajos más más gente, contratos más, más grandes, contratos, yeah. Más grandes. Yeah. es que se trata de la presentación profesional de tu negocio yeah. so es es por, por ejemplo, ahorita, tú viniste bien presentable, bien guapo. Bro. You know, si estamos aquí, eh, si es una entrevista, un trabajo, te contrato. You know, <laughs> because you're presentable. You right. know, y, y hay veces cuando eh, nos presentamos a algún lugar, um, como decimos a veces todos, despeinados, jodón, así como vine yo. Bro. Así que, <laughs> cuando nos presentamos así, no presentables, a veces, eh, como que es la primera impresión que se lleva el cliente. Yeah. So, cuando hablamos de, de los contratistas, y, y tú te presentas con tu tarjeta profesional, tu logotipo profesional, tu página web presentable, que en tus redes sociales tienes fotos profesionales, no borrosas con el dedo ahí o con el trabajador sin camisa, yeah. you know? que se vea todo bien, con más razón los contratistas, los contratos más grandes, las compañías americanas van a decir, you know what, te voy a contratar, o te voy a dar la oportunidad de que te sientes conmigo para que me expliques qué me puedes ofrecer y cómo me puedes ayudar. Yeah. Yo creo que para muchos eso es la importancia de tener algo presentable y profesional. Ya, yeah, absoluto. Es parte de lo que ahora tienes que hacer. Uh -huh. Pero una vez más, el trabajo ya lo sabes hacer. Ahora, sí. ¿qué puedes hacer para ti para poder crecer más grandes, yeah. contratos más grandes y poder hacer algo más establecido? Yeah. No, y si te contara las fotos que me mandan a veces right. los contratistas, son trabajos que yo me quedo como, oye, You know your stuff, like, mm -hmm. trabajos bien bonitos, a veces están construyendo casas, están construyendo, remodelando las cosas, y se ve presentable y profesional, y como dices tú, a veces lo único que falta es nada más empaquetarlo, que sea bonito, aquí está. Package it. That's all they so need, the people package that it up, it. that's it. Yeah. Uh, Cause yeah, there's a lot of contractors that are very talented, man. Yeah, that's cool. Y Latinos Marketing Group, nunca sonó. It wasn't... Uh, Latinos Marketing Group, I played with it. Um, I think there might be something out there, man. Yeah. No free promo here. No free promo. Hispanos Marketing Group, by the way. No shout out. No shout out. Okay. We're running shortly on time, but thank you so much. Uh, you started um, launching, before I let you go, classes. Yeah. Uh, what exactly does class entail? Where can people go and watch the class? Where can they attend? Is it an online class? Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Uh, somewhere that you can go to? Yeah, so uh, what we're going to be doing is um, hopefully we want to make it a recurring thing every Saturday to do Spanish classes, um, English classes too, but Spanish classes really more more so um, for marketing. So any any business owner, entrepreneur that wants to learn a little bit about the fundamentals of marketing, we're going to be getting those classes uh, recurring on either Saturday, maybe one day out of the week. Um, but just the best way to reach out is just either the website, SpanishMarketingGroup.com or um, our social media, Spanish Marketing. Mm -hmm. um, or reach out to me. Um, and what is the curriculum? What is it? Anybody? Y en español también. Sí. Um, Alguien que quiera tomar tus clases de mercadeo, de todo Mercado lo técnico. que es. Sí, bueno, las clases son gratis, uh -huh. principalmente. Es lo más importante. Que a veces dicen, pues, ¿cuánto cuesta? De gratis, no te preocupes. ¿no? Vamos a ayudar. Eh, pero en sí, las, el propósito de las clases eh, y varios de los temas que se van a tocar, el propósito principal es que repasemos los fundamentos. ¿Verdad? ¿De ¿Qué es marketing? ¿Por qué lo necesitas? ¿Cómo te puedes vender utilizando tu presencia en línea? Eh, y ya de ahí, eh, tratar de figurar eh, cómo lo puedes implementar en tu negocio, que yo creo que es lo más importante, porque hay muchas maneras de cómo implementar tu marketing, o en inglés es marketing, pero es, la palabra es mercadotecnia, pero muchos, Mer muchas mercado personas, tecnia. mercadotecnia, pero mucha mm -hmm. gente ya conoce el término marketing, marketing sí. por eso le puse hispanos marketing. Eh, es un tema, es, es, un, es un, una palabra muy común ya. Um, pero si es, es el propósito realmente de las clases, eh, clases gratis, um, pero sí, nada más para informar, educar a las personas de qué es marketing o cómo lo puedes implementar en tu negocio. Okay. Entonces, veremos que 
En las próximas semanas, este mes en particular, lancemos varias, eh, pero los estaré subiendo en las redes sociales. So, Saturdays, usually, los sábados, más o menos, sometimes. Algo eh, con las 10. Sí. Eh, sí. Sí. ¿Cuánto dura la clase? ¿Una hora, dos horas, tres horas? Yo diría como una hora. Una, hora. una hora. ¿Y es sí. por Zoom? A través de Zoom. Por Zoom. Yeah. A través de Zoom puedes meterte ahí y escuchar o ver que lo que haces, how does it work, what is, yeah. qué, qué es marketing, Mar yeah. Mar Mar mercadotecnia, qué yeah. es para empezar. Se le está leyendo el español. Eh, Mar mercadotecnia. But before we leave, uh -huh. tell us a little about the, the, the braided Crispin. So, three years ago when I started the podcast, I thought it was a cool idea to have my hair braided all the time and just do it. Yeah. Just talk about, you know, just because I had done, I, I still have long hair. But I just, you know, I don't know. I felt like that was the look for me to go and yeah. start off the podcast. Yeah. And not transition. I, think, to... I vote that we should bring it back. <laughs> we might bring it back. But <laughs> yeah, I started yeah. doing the podcast there just by myself talking and just making stuff up and then not making stuff up, but yeah. to my best ability to yeah. be able to kind of share with the world some of the things are that maybe they don't understand about Latinos, yeah. Latino culture. No, no, for sure. And I did my best effort to research and give history, give stories. Uh, tell why this song became this or whatever. Yeah, I like you that. I, I was researching. I was yeah. like, it gave me, you gave me a Wisinning Al Del vibes. You and know, I was, I did some music. I got some music. You can check it out on Spotify. Yeah. Oh, bro, what was your rap name? Well, back then it was just Crisp and I changed it. Yeah. Way, way back in the day, it was a different <laughs> one. That guy doesn't exist. What was anymore. it? What was it? <laughs> share, share. There's no way. There's actually, it was, uh, it only lasted for a very short time. It yeah. Was only, uh, it was stupid. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you only some people know is VP. <laughs> Yeah. VP, uh, VP, Boss Poppy. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's what it was, Boss? Like Boss the Water? Yeah, yeah kind of like that, spelled out with a V. Boss Poppy. Yeah, for like so from now on, he's no longer time. Crispin, he's Boss Poppy. For like a second. <laughs> like one time I went to this thing about, um, it was personal growth. I was yeah. like, man, why am I just, I'm Crispin. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but podcast, what, like we were telling stories about people, como like una novela, una novela like people yeah. tapping into. Yeah. Y como casi todos los actores, los protagonistas de una novela mm -hmm. tienen dos nombres. Sí, sí. José Eduardo. Oh, Crispy so yours was Boss Papi. No, I'm Crispy Valentin. Oh, Crispy Valentin. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's Crisp, Crispy Valentin. Oh. That's my name. That's my real name, too. Chris or Crispy? Crispy Valentin. Crispy, okay. Yeah. Hey, I already have a famous name. My name yeah. is already famous. Yeah, it's, I just gotta, it's unique. I just got to take yeah. it there to uh, yeah. people recognize it. Yeah. You know, but that's all. But yeah, that's that was awesome. my short, very short-lived rapper career. But... Recently, last year, I had some songs out just because I oh, really? never had songs out, yeah. like technically distributed and, and stuff like that. So I did it. Well, on I Spotify? Recorded, yeah, I got them on Spotify. What is the Spotify podcast. playlist? Crispin Valentin. Crispin. Yeah. Oh, we're going to look you'll, it up. You'll find Set some up. songs there yeah. that I did. I did a rapping song. I did a reggaeton type vibe song. And I did one that's just like a, it's, it's like a, it's about a real story that happened because yeah. I was military. Mm. So... I had a, a particular night that happened and the song's called 300 Shots. And mm. it kind of, you listen to it, it sounds violent and everything and that's yeah, yeah. what I wanted to give it that feel of it. Yeah. But it's about a particular night that happened when I was deployed and it talks about 300 shots. It was more than 300 shots. Yeah. But the story itself, you can kind of sort of tell or like, oh, dang. But yeah. it's like, it has a trap beat. It has freaking, it's rugged. It sounds crazy. What, but is it's it clean. called 300 Shots? Yeah. I'm going to look it up. It's that should clean. be the outro to this video. It's a clean, shots. it's a clean freaking uh, uh, song. No cursing. Yeah. But it's just like super like, ah, aggressive. Super. Nice. And that's what I wanted. The other one is, I'm a G. Okay. And I'm a G is like, I'm a G. Uh, I'm like, a, it's a vibe type. Yeah. I'm a G. But it's more of a. That sounds more like I'm a G and then the G is for great. Not like a G, I'm a gangster or anything. Like yeah, I'm a G yeah. and the G is for great. Yeah. And that's something I say You're sometimes. You're like a good gangster. Like a good gangster. Yeah. So I'm a G and the G is for great. Like I'm always great. Anybody asks me, how you doing? I'm great. Yeah. And it's just the thing that I did. I made a song out of it. And I now you, too. Yeah? No, you did it. Did you for real? For like that's a, what's up. Uh, like a little, but it was like, that was back in my Pleasant Grove days. Yeah. You know, it's because I have a cousin who who uh, was rapping when growing up. Do I know up. your cousin? Maybe I know your cousin. Know His name is people. Ozzy. I don't know if you know him. Ozzy. That name sounds familiar to me. Yeah. Ozzy from the Greedy Grove. I, I, that name sounds familiar to me. Yeah, yeah. So me. he he was he would rap. And then I remember I had a duck tail and everything, bro. I yeah. know you know uh, for sure uh, the homie. Um, I, I, I interviewed him from yeah. uh, Roly. Mark okay, yeah, Roly. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw the interview. Mark yeah, yeah. Roly's from the Grove. Oh, what? That homie goes. Yeah. He, Did you grow up in Let's Grove? No, but I used to go. Uh, yeah. all the, used, uh, that's why uh, I know the virus of the nervousness yeah. sometimes. Because people will say, Oak Cliff, this and that. I'm like, Oak Cliff, I'm very nah. comfortable. But when I go to the Grove, though, I'm just 
a little nervous sometimes. <laughs> just, like, just a little bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But but you're right though. Food, culture, yeah. everything. Like the one of the videos that I shot for the for the podcast song. So we have a song for the podcast. Yeah. And is that of, the intro one? Yep. That one's a good one. Well, we have the whole video for but it. But is that you? No, this okay. is my homie Kilo. He's one of oh, my guests from nice. Chile. So we went to the Grove yeah. at the Cinco de Mayo parade and got yeah. a bunch of footage there. Mm-hmm. And got a song, a whole video out. Oh, wow. So we got an actual video for the podcast, too. And that one's already Global out? In fact, it's been out for about a year. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Cool. It's about to be 2,000 views. The what? homie gets down on the hook, the beat. I kind of sort of gave yeah. him the idea of, like, a little bit of secular produce. Like, yeah. I want to go with this. I want this type of sound. Yeah. This is, like, part of the hook. Kind of sort of wanted so this. So you were, part. like, executive producing. Yeah. Well, I did executive produce. Yeah. I put all the funding and everything for yeah. the song itself and the video. Are so. you taking it back, too? What's that? Are you taking the rapping back, too? I, well, after those songs, I have ideas to create stuff, too. I, I haven't let it go all the way because it's just, like, I don't know. It's a good creative way outlet. And I have a bunch of ideas. And even if yeah. it's not me, I like to, even if it's executive produce some tracks for people. Because I have a good concept of how to run a, a label properly and things like that. Yeah. So maybe in the near future, something else pops up. I definitely want to do a video. Yeah. So I'm ev- eventually going to do a video. Because you can't boo- be a full-blown artist and everything unless you have a video. Out. Yeah, you have to have So some. once I have the right song, maybe when even... When it's the quality, bro, it'd yeah. be... So. Anyways, <laughs> thanks so much for those questions, <laughs> sir. You're a great interviewer, yeah. too, by the way. Uh, you haven't seen some of his episodes he's out and about. He has a couple of videos out. Uh, it's just a little bit, a little bit of videos here and there. Pero, podcast coming soon as well. Yeah, I, I'm a, hopefully a podcast coming I got soon. You. I'm gonna interview you. Okay, I got yeah. I got some for you. Maybe we can work something out. Okay, awesome. before I let you go, uh, all your social media. Where can people find you at? Yeah, so all social media is the same. Uh, ITS like it's Chris Rocha. Mm-hmm. Chris Rocha. That's it. That's Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, everything. It's it's Chris Rocha. Um, verified blue check just saying I mean I'm not trying to flex but I got a blue check <laughs> I pay for it like $15 a month <laughs> but uh, it's I'm just gonna, I was gonna I wasn't <laughs> no. gonna burst your bubble but I'm like <laughs> I knew I saw it in your eyes you were like really bro you're paying for I it yeah, get a blue check yeah, too yeah. Yeah. that sucks that they did it to yeah, you bro cause... but then at the same time it gives you some credibility you know? for some people it makes you feel that good that you have $15.99 to spend <laughs> on every month but yeah. it, it does it does yeah. for some people yeah. still it does it, it helps something. me a little bit with my confidence that's cool Hey, no, just what, kidding. I, I ever, yeah, it's Kid Roja and then Hispanos Marketing Group is the name of my business. Um, and the other one. En Contratista Latino USA. If you want to, um, if you have a tío or tía, we all have a tío or tía that is some, in some way or form involved in the contracting space. Send them my way. I can help them. You know you heard your tío or your tía before. Said, mira, se ve bien bonito esto. Mira, ¿cómo le puedo hacer esto? Exactly. Hey, he's the guy yeah. que te, 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 te vamos a ayudar. ponga, pero bien. Bien bonito en la internet, en la interweb, para que te veas tu negocio y se vea como es un negocio de cinco estrellas. Porque el, el trabajo ya es de cinco estrellas. Your work is already five stars. You just need to look it. Yeah. You look yeah, the yeah. part. For sure. Yeah. yeah. What projects, besides what you're doing right now, keep hustling, keep working it, keep growing it. What are your plans to scale up at a later time in the very near future? Yeah. So with the marketing, it's a little bit challenging to scale at a rapid pace because there's only a handful of people that you can help with the limited staff that you have. So I want to figure out what's the best way that I could reach the most people, help the most people. So maybe streamlining a lot of the processes uh, without losing the personal touch. Mm -hmm. Um, So as far as marketing goes, I really want to, I want to just focus on helping the Hispanic community. I think there's a lot of potential behind Contratista Contratista Latino. I want to put together in the future uh, expos. I want to put together uh, webinars, seminars. We talk uh, about even doing maybe some uh, events, some yeah. uh, so, um, networking events. Yeah, yeah, networking events under Contratista Latino. Put a panel together. Have somebody in finances, somebody in banking, somebody to, that speaks the language, understands the culture, um, and then just bring people together, man. Bring people yeah. together with the purpose of educating, providing resources free of charge. Um, and the only thing, obviously, that they pay for would be like a service. But uh, but yeah, I want to scale it to the point where it's like Contratista Latino USA is like, I've heard of it. I want to get to that Because it makes, <clears throat> your approach makes sense, right? Yeah. How are you going to buy something you really don't understand sometimes? Especially knowing yeah. that you already have questions about people taking advantage of people not delivering on there, right? Yeah. So if you're educating, what exactly is this? Why do I need this? What, even the fundamentals. Yeah. Like, oh. Ahora ya entiendo. Yeah. Lo que estoy viendo en la tele es exactamente lo que yo puedo hacer con mi negocio. Yeah. Put it right there. Pero como le hago. Yeah. You know, por no. qué los colores? Por qué esto? Por qué esto? You know? Exactly. That's a good point. It's funny you bring Why that the up. colors? Yeah. It, 
a veces el, el tipo de, de los colores, la tipografía, las imágenes, el diseño, el concepto, es like, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué no. lo tengo que hacer así? ¿Por qué no nada más puedo agarrar algo del internet? You know? Porque de seguro es de alguien. Porque es probablemente alguien que me va a sue you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, pero a veces exactly. son temas que, que son preguntas que nosotros quizás sabemos la respuesta, pero mucha gente que a veces no saben por qué, no saben y, y quieren saber. And I think we live in a time where um, with, with more reason we have to put a face behind what we do yeah. to create that trust and confidence in people. Yeah. But it's, it's a beautiful approach for the education part to be able to get them to even understand to yeah. know why they need the services. Yeah. Not just because, you know. Yeah. And it's all our, it's, 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 it's our moms, it's our dads, it's our uncles. So it's like, it's kind of even a greater feeling. Like, it's como si estás haciendo a tu tío, a tu mamá, a tu papá, you know. So I think it's, 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 you're winning on both ends. But, but you will appreciate que a alguien le ayuda a tu tío. Yeah, for sure. Ex ex excelentemente, right? Yeah, yeah. Que le ayuden bien. You will bien. love, que le exactly. ayuden bien. Yeah. Like, you don't want que después estás en la carne asada or just hanging out. Like, ah, oh, tenía oh. este y se aprovechó de mí. Exactly. Like, That's the worst man. feeling, huh? Cuando sabes like, ¿quién es tío? Let me go find him. Exactly. ¿Quién fue? You know let what me, I mean? Go Instead of him. like, heck yeah. Let me, hey. let me take Voss Papi to go talk to Shoot. him. Shoot. <laughs> And then he's like, heck yeah, man. Yeah. He helped you out. Oh, qué bien. Hey, mi yeah. tía tiene ese negocio. Necesita un poquito más. Yeah. O sea, sí, está, sí, está sí. bien. Tu tienda está bien chida, pero necesita un poquito más de ayuda. Hey, lo voy a mandar a él. You know what I mean? O a veces, o a veces tener esa confianza de, de, oye, pues yo conozco a alguien que me ayudó. Uh -huh. me, me, me hicieron las cosas como deben de ser. Y, y porque pues obviamente te aprecio ahí te va este contacto yeah. y si uh -huh. if you're one of those people that taking advantage of my people man, you're, man we're gonna yeah. find you eventually and yeah. eventually you're gonna be washed up or you're not gonna have a business because it's yeah. not cool to take it's advantage not. of but people especially they work so hard exactly they put their life on the line to get to the state right yeah. to be able to work for a brighter future for you to be able to scam them you're a piece yeah. of yeah, yeah I'm with know. you man I'm with you and Like I said, there's so many experiences that I, uh, these conversations that I've had with people que a veces, te aguita, bro, te aguita bastante que, que a veces, como dices tú, tanto sacrificio que viene detrás, just even being here, bro. Right. Y luego tanto sacrificio de, de, de estar trabajando aquí o a veces siempre te, estar a, 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 con esa expectativa de que, oye, well, maybe, you know, somebody's going to pull me over, like, with that fear of just even being here. And then on top of that, you have people that screw you over. Like, that's, that's some of the worst type of people that can exist. I can see you through a lot of these um, contractors and a lot of these entrepreneurs the way that you were kind of sort of bamboozled a little bit of like telling you something and then all of a sudden yeah. take it from yeah. you. Yeah, man. I know what it's like to just kind of sometimes you're, you're sold a dream and you're just like, well, dang, it didn't play out the way it was you were hoping for. But now it, yeah. it played out for the best for yeah, you. Yeah, you know? for sure. That's so I'm awesome. grateful. Awesome. Uh, When you were coming on your way over here, like, man, I wish he asked me this particular question. Or I wish he touches up on this. Is there anything that we didn't touch upon that you really wanted to touch upon? Um, no, I think for the most part, um, I think one of the things that I, I'll be honest, I'll be honest. Whenever I was coming over here, I was like, I was nervous. <laughs> But then I was like, But you know, what? But what I wanted to really the the purpose, I think, for for this interview, for me, it wasn't for me to to, to put myself higher than than where I'm at, because I know. Every day is, is, is a new challenge. Every day is a new opportunity to get to where we want to be. So for me, it's just like I live in reality, you know, and I think a lot of people sometimes, not here, but I, when I've seen people like in podcasts or in videos, a veces como que se levantan el cuello muy alto, que, oh, I made it, you know, and then bro, we, we, we still trying to make it, you know. So I think for me, that importance of, of which I think we, we accomplished here, transmitting the, the rawness and the reality of like the journey. I think that's mainly what I was really, really hoping for. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out a lot of things out, you know, and I'm still trying to help people and I'm still trying to grow my business. And right. I go through the same struggles that a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs probably don't say, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you've gone to networking events. I've had experiences in some networking events years ago. Que a veces entras, bro, and you're just like, sientes como que hasta menos because you're just like, hey, well, he looks all well put together, you know. So me, I, I, I didn't come to pretend that I'm put together, you know, I'm, I'm raw and real and, and we're still trying to figure it out we're yeah. still trying to help and but i think your line of questioning was great man yeah the, subscribe uh, his podcast is, is the best yeah the thing that <clears throat> the front that some people like not not to yeah. please don't take it as a bad thing you know but a lot of the times we go into social events yeah putting up a front we do we all got to figure out yeah, where our yeah. ego is on our way knowing that if we just talk to this one person that can put us in a better position because of what he's saying yeah or the connection we can make to better yeah. off. That's the reason why we go to some of these type of events, yep. right? You know, 
to to expand ourselves. Your network is your net worth. All that yeah. stuff that they're saying. Yeah. There's a reason for it, right? So you just kind of sort of like got to bring it down. I don't have it together. Yeah, we don't. But I'm okay. Yeah. But let's talk to me. What you got? Yeah. Maybe maybe you and maybe I can we work can help to, each other. Too, yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Maybe we can help each other out. Maybe you're the missing key that I was like lacking. Yeah. That's gonna open up that bigger things for me. Yeah. You know? Many doors and opportunities have been opened through networking events yeah. for sure. And then going to do it, it's it's been that mindset of coming in as as humbly as you can and saying, you know what, I don't have to figure it out. Uh, I'm not here to put myself down either, but I'm here to just be honest and say, hey, you know what, if 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 there's any type of partnership that can come out of this event, or is any type of assistance that could come out of any resource, yeah. I'm gonna take. It. Yeah. So, but then you know your worth as far as your skills and what you're able to yeah. deliver for people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, you you don't, but it's a great. There's a beautiful, it's a beautiful and powerful thing about not knowing, right? Because that opens up the possibility of getting to know yeah. and learning something new instead of thinking that you know everything. Yeah. Because that yeah. puts you in a very weird position thinking that you know everything. Yeah. And we don't always know everything. Yeah. We won't always have it figured out. Yeah. I mean, any industry, anything, everything is just evolving so quickly, especially with technology, that there's always going to be somebody that just knows a little bit more than us. And I think having that sense of like, you know, I don't have it figured out. I think it's going to help us be more open and receptive. Absolutely. And any shout out, saludos. Shout out, shout out. To my family in Monterrey, New Leon. My family in Tampico, Tamaulipas. Uh, shout out to you. We are here with Crispin. We made it. We made it to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. When I wake up, I usually have a saying, something along those lines. I'm not immortal. I am mortal. And I will die one day. That's yeah. not to scare me, to frighten me, terrorize me, bring me. That's bad, good. Bad juju. That's the first time I've heard it. It's really but good. It helps me realize that I'm not immortal, right? Um, this is short lived. Um, it makes me hurry up and want to do things and, and keep busy with things, right? Um, there's some power realizing your mortality, right? And it helps you hurry up and get to do stuff instead of just thinking about it. With that, I wish yeah. you a long, prosperous life. However, when everything's said and done, what, what do you want people to think and feel about your life? That was a deep question, man. Anyway. You didn't get really to the end of the podcast. Yeah, I know. That's what I happened to you. That's crazy. I skipped through it. I skipped through it. <laughs> no, I think, well, that's a good question, man. I think, if anything, one of the things that I've realized um, is that we can do everything. We can do our best to be remembered, you know, as much as we can. Um, if we can live our entire life trying to be remembered by something. But I think I, I've kind of came to the realization that at some point you're forgotten. That's reality. Whether it's one generation, two, three generations down. Yep. So I think living to create a lasting memory of who I was is not as impactful as actually living to create change in the people around me. Impact them to the point where that memory is, the change is outlasting the memory of who I was. Whether that is, you know, helping people with, you know, generational wealth, whether it's helping people establish a generational company, right? Or anything that I could do that could, last more than the memory of who christian was i think that'd be great that'd be that'd be great i mean because at the end of the day i'm not gonna be here bro it's not like i'm gonna look back and be like oh se acordaron de mí. i mean it'd be great if they make a statue of me you know so if i'm gone please make a statue of me <laughs> in my mom's front yard <laughs> so she can hey, see me there. <laughs> yeah one of the dopest answers I, I it's really good a lot of people don't realize that after a few generations you're gone that's it. Nobody remembers you. No more Christian Roach. <laughs> what is an important lesson that you learned doing marketing or establishing your company that you would tell your younger self that would help somebody else out? What would that be? Yeah, um, definitely um, uh, have consistency, consistency and determination. And um, because one of the things that I think I, I lacked a lot was that consistency of, of, of doing things to the point where even though I didn't see results, continue. Even mm -hmm. though I just wasn't seeing the finances, continue because that outlasts sometimes and that shows more fruit at the end because you've been doing it for such a long time consistently rather than pockets of time. So I think that speaks more volume. So I tell myself, hey man, just keep going. You know, any little thing that you could do, just remain consistent, even if it's not marketing, anything, you know, see if I'm, you know, cleaning shoes, if I'm doing something, like just do it, do it, do it, do it. Hard work is going to pay off. I think that consistency. Yeah, sometimes it's so much easier to throw in the town and quit, you yeah. know, but this is a motivational video um, Les Brown talks about when you're in your deathbed. Oh, I love you, Les Brown. All the dreams come and visit you with big old eyes that, that we came to you. It's, you yeah, you, the um, whenever you're at your deathbed yeah. and then the memories or the souls of, of, of the unfulfilled dreams are going to come to you and say, why did you let me die? Yeah. 
Hey man, we're out there space good, yeah. in the cemetery. Yeah, it's the cemetery. Exactly. The same reason. So you know, give it a go. Yeah, and keep it going. Cause and don't be afraid to pivot either. Yeah. I mean, because sometimes uh, you can get fixated in in what could have happened as far as like what could, what I could do in this industry, or, or sometimes you get so fixated on this dream and aspiration, and sometimes it's time to pivot. Yeah. You know, and and if if what it what ends up happening is if you drag out. A, a, a dream that you want to fulfill that maybe isn't working out you're dragging it out and you're just kind of like inevitably like going to fail anyways because that it was time for you to pivot it was time for you to adapt and evolve so not only that do not get discouraged i'm not telling you what to do but do not get yeah. discouraged if other people do not see the dream that was given to you and the vision that was given to you yeah. to fulfill other people are not going to see it that way because no. they don't have the passion the drive the dream of the things that you're already seeing yeah. that unfortunately they're not might not be with you and it's okay yeah. Because it was given to you to fulfill not for them. Yeah. If it so happen to be that you find people along the way that can help you out and grow, great. Yeah. If not, it was given to you to fulfill. You got to keep it going for you. Yeah. Even when it's almost feels like you time to you to throw in the towel. Just keep it going. Keep pushing. Keep, keep pushing. it going. Agreed. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you so much. it. The first time I met you at the chamber, again, it was already vibes at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It was super cool to meet you. You go out there, you're super excited. Shake Talking to everybody, hands. hey, what's up, bro? Uh, ex- absolutely. Yeah. Uh, friendly, inviting, even the vibes itself. You know, you were, immediately, as soon as you you saw my stuff, you took it to Gilbert. Like, mira, mira. Like, yeah, I, I, oh, that's know? right. I was like, bro, <laughs> did, did you, you see it? this guy's quality? Gilberto was like, what? He didn't even know, right? No, he didn't. Because yeah. I keep it, I try to keep that separate from what I do regularly. But not but, me, I say. But here and there, yeah. you know, I throw it yeah. in because I do this. Do this. Yeah. I'm very passionate about yeah. it sharing those beautiful stories that, that we have, um, the resources of the things that you do that can help our community out. Yeah. I think it's super powerful. And even though what I do what I do, I, I do it to the most when I have an opportunity. Yeah. And it was way after everybody's already yeah. almost gone. But how did you feel that months. that I was like so excited about it? Was, it freaking made me feel good. Why yeah. wouldn't it? Because I, yeah. we have been putting a lot of work. Yeah. We have been super proud of what we've done so far. You know, yeah. we're going to keep it rolling. But... It just makes you feel good. Why? Yeah. Why? It's okay to acknowledge it. It make you feel good because you're doing good work, and you yeah. know, and so people can really recognize. Yeah, it. and I think that th- that's when you kind of see like, oh, because sometimes you're kind of going through the cycle of like, oh man, I've been putting in the work, but then it's like that one person that like I was genuinely excited, bro. Like you saw it, and I was yeah, like, yo, like look, you, I was just impressed by everything, bro. The colors, the the, the quality, and the format and I was I ran out to Gilberto like hey bro look at, look at this guy's videos and he was excited too he was like oh yeah. we're gonna do something yeah, yeah we're gonna do something with yeah. him too we're not done yet um, yeah. but yeah we're absolutely gonna get something done and yeah it makes you super proud because you realize that you know some of the things even though the monetary part is not there the impact yeah that is more valuable sometimes even when I realize how much impact you are really doing in the community and yeah. everybody tells me all the time like bro you're really changing something bro you're really educating people and you're really making a difference in the community. You really, yeah. uh, you're, you're a representation of something that other people are not doing, you know? Yeah. All the celebrity talk and everything, to, to each their own. Not my yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, rather not. Rather have an impact in the community that is long live after me, that even though I might be remember, those videos are going to be YouTube. be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. But yeah, I've, I, as soon as I saw it, you're super excited. Your 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 marketing, yeah. the the company itself, and then shortly after, I realized how much the stuff you've gone through, as far as your story, I'd be like, man, that is freaking yeah. wild. And like, I, I am, I, I'm truly sorry for your loss, bro. But I don't doubt that your dad is up there, looking down, and realizing, and very proud of the work that you've done, realizing that all those times that he got to spend with you, you're exercising in real life right now. Yeah, and we we a hundred percent proud of you, man. I appreciate it. That means a lot. And without a doubt, Christian Rocha, you are a global Latin factor. Thank you very much appreciate for being it. here. Thank I appreciate you so much, you. sir. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. This was another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember to subscribe right now. Subscribe, subscribe. I'm your host, Crispin Balatin. And remember, we are just like you. We are people. We are the spice in this melting pot. It is the world. Till next time. Thank you very much for checking out this episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel and check out one of the other episodes that we have prepared for you. Thank you very much. Till next time. Pero but in fact is a flamingo coming to Havana and refreshing.